What's happening here? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, then welcome to the channel. So in this video we are looking at this from the late 80s. We're not sure of the exact year just yet. Might find out as we go along. Um, a guitar, entry level guitar by Axe. And this has not been in use pretty much since about then, I believe. Uh, it's been buried in someone's music room. And it's been donated to me. Well, given to me. I can do what I like with it. Overall condition is, I'd say, grubby. It's got some dings, like there. It's got axe written on it, on the body, instead of on the headstock. Nothing on the headstock. Um, it's two humbucker, three-way switch, volume tone, jack. And the neck, I don't know what material that neck is. I don't know if that's like a stained neck, painted neck, whatever, but it's got... The red paint is painted. Right, let's turn this over. <laughs> oh, crap. Another ding for it. It's painted and it goes right round the side. So I don't know whether there's a binding. I think there is a binding there. Can we see that? A red binding on the side of the neck, which is pretty cool. I like that. Um, and very simple thing. The body shape is. I would say a strat splat. <laughs> um, made in Korea, the SC24T. So I'm going to take this apart and look at the ins and outs. Let's make sure it works first before we do anything. I'm, I'm really interested to get into this and see what it's made of and everything else. It's only entry level, it's not going to be anything spectacular, but it's uh, quite a unique one for me. I'm plugging it in. It's not even scratchy on the pots, that's amazing. Strings are in a terrible old state. Um, obviously we're going to replace them, we're going to put some of these on, some Diodario 10s, blah blah blah. And give it an overhaul, set it all up, and then give it a good old spankadoodle. Just whipped off the back cover uh, to get the strings out, so you can see it's got a trim, reasonable size block. Um, weirdly, you can see the pickup. You can see the humbucker there. <laughs> Through that cavity, I don't know whether that will make a difference to the sound of that pickup or not being right next to those springs like that. Um, it's a bit odd though. I've never seen anything like that before. Let's have a look. I'll whip this out. And have a look at that. I'm surprised that it's like that to be fair, but anyway. So you've got the whole so the pickup goes right you can see the springs. They just basically cut that straight out there all the way down. Um bit strange but there you go we'll, we'll see what that sounds like later um, plywood body by the looks of it 88 pounds they were in late 80s which is about 205 pounds in today's money so it's kind of like a good Squire or a good I say a good Harley Benton or a higher end Harley Benton or something like that what I mean by that was is all Harley Bentons are good I love Harley Benton's. No endorsement. Um, they should endorse me though. So anyway, moving on. Uh, I'm going to whip the neck off. We're going to have a look at the pocket. Look at the electrics. Um, this guitar has not been used all that much, so I'm not expecting it to be in bad working order anyway. The frets don't really show any signs of wear at all. So just going to be a polish up on those uh, we'll check for for any high frets and things like that but I think this one's going to be a doozy neck is off there you go it looks like it's got a little bit of a shim thing going on here 
tiny bit of what looks like electrical tape or something just on the hill there which may be working as a shim I'll leave that where it is for now tuners are like that pretty much like you see on a lot of entry-level guitar but they all feel smooth not bad at all I don't know what the uh, tuning stability is like on this guitar because I haven't really played it and uh, the nut is plastic but looks to be okay at the moment so yeah neck that's the neck that's the neck uh, that noise you can hear is my fan it's like 120 degrees in here so shut up anyway neck pocket and it's cut right down to the pickup so you can see the pickup <laughs> there uh, but it looks neat you know it looks nice and neat and straight and like it's not badly done at all actually um, definitely a plywood a plywood body but I haven't got a problem with plywood bodies whatsoever let's just whip off the plate for the electronics see what's going on in here so all this is original I'm gonna keep it all original as well all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna polish it all up make it nice and clean polish the frets out deal with any issues if there is any and just give it a good old setup and rock out on it I think it would be a nice addition to my collection I think um, I may be able to use it in the Voodoo Shakes this is a band I've joined recently I've got my Columbus uh, 335 copy which I use in that band suits the band really well and this could be another one that could suit the band really well being a double humbucker guitar as opposed to my regular strats so there you go it looks all pretty standard stuff really um, no shielding as such unless that's shielding paint I'm not sure um, doesn't look like it's ever been tampered with all oh, looks original tiny wee pots in there but I it, it all works so and there's no crackles or anything so I'm just gonna leave it um, I could maybe upgrade some of that later if I wanted to but I don't think I will I might just keep this as it is because it is a bit of history and I do like that uh, but we're gonna give this a clean up now put it all back together so yeah let's do it I do on all my guitars I use stuff like this teacup it's meant for cars for bringing out scratches polishing up paintwork bringing back the uh, color if you like I use some of this this always works really really well yeah, just basically working in small areas just polishing out it's a, it's a slight abrasive polish that's all it is so that'll bring out any minor scratches and get all the grime out and just bring life to the paintwork polish it up nice um, it doesn't get anything major out um, I've got rubbing compound for that kind of thing but I'm not too worried it has it has war wounds it has scars like my Columbus um, so I'm not worried about it um, we're just gonna uh, just breathe some new life into it that's basically it uh, there we go all polished up the color is really lovely I don't know what color that is is that like a Ferrari red or I don't know maybe you can tell me and the neck it's come up really 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 nice I really love that color beautiful uh, blatant rip-off Strat headstock but it was the 80s they got away with stuff like that <laughs> I suppose part of me wants to renovate this back to like new condition but another part of me doesn't because it is a piece of history uh, would I be able to match this colour? That would be interesting. Um, probably get close to it. Um, but you would lose that if I resprayed it, refinished it. Yeah. We'll just leave it as it is. It's not probably not worth it to be honest. Um, it's looking pretty cool though. Uh, with the wounds and all. Um, this would have been quite a good looking guitar. Brand new, but it is a good looking guitar, I think. I don't know what you think you can let me know um, got a cracked knob there but it's not falling off so we'll just, we'll just leave it it's fine um, if it all sounds okay and plays okay I will probably use this guitar uh, anyway and why not hey eh? why not so I use the same stuff on the frets like I say there's no wear at all on these frets so it hasn't been played all that much 
Um, so I'll just use the same stuff, brings them up lovely. Like I say, when we restring it and set it up, we'll deal with any issues, if there is any issues, I'm not sure if there is. Um, with any high frets or anything like that. But we'll see how it goes. See, I, I like using the uh, polish rather than wire walls. I know a lot of people like wire wall, but it just saves on all those filings going everywhere. Even if you tape off the pickups, you always seem to get some filings sticking to the pickups at some point. Um, this just eliminates all of that and brings them up real nice and gets the uh, gets a lot of the crap off the board as well. If there's any finger jam on there. Is it? It's good. Um, and then just grab a bit of lemon oil, a little bit of lemon oil here, and I'll just put a few dabs, a few dabs, a few dabs. That'll do it. And then rub that in. There's some sharp fret ends down here, and here it's grabbing the cloth. See that? So I might have to, yeah, quite sharp down there. So I might address that. Um, just get this in there. That's easy to sort out. Not a problem. I see what it's like when I play it. Because we've got the binding here, so playing it, you might not feel that. Um, but we'll see. But I can sort that out. And there we go. One well oiled and polished guitar neck. And the guitar ready to be strung and set up. This is it. Bob's your monkey. So strings are on. Uh, obviously, there's some issues here with the saddles. All need uh, leveling up properly, action, and everything else. I've noticed that the truss rod adjustment <laughs> is at this end. Um, so we to get to that, we'd need to take this pickup out if we need to adjust it. But we'll see what happens when we get to that. Um, and the trim is moving, the trim is moving um, when I'm bending the strings and as it doesn't have an arm um, I'm just going to pin that back, I'm going to put an extra couple of springs in the back of that just so that just holds it tight which will help with the tuning stability and stuff like that so so there you go, I've got five springs in there and I've screwed the claw right back to the body so that's pulling that nice and tight this actually does help with sustain as well I found on uh, my other guitar so little tip for you if you want to get more sustain and you're not use, using your tremolo not interested put some extra springs in there